the lack of vision and purpose mm -hmm. is the reason why many people will succumb to temptations that have existed right from the days of Joseph till now. Mm -hmm. So this issue of quick money, mm -hmm. um, this issue of um, sexual temptations, they've always been there. Mm -hmm. But when you have um, direction, when you have purpose, when you know why God puts you in this nation, mm -hmm. why you were born here, according to Acts 17, Bible says God determined the bounds of our habitation. Mm -hmm. He knew that this is the best place we can make impact. He it's knew okay. Um, that um, like she said Steve Jobs came to America because God planted him there to make impact there mm -hmm. so I strongly believe that because we lack direction and mentorship mm -hmm. um, we haven't been able to um, rise up to the occasion to solve all these problems so I think that what we are discussing tonight is very serious because I believe that most parents I've dealt with didn't have a clue things their children have been introduced to most um, let me say most pastors even mm -hmm. don't even know what the youth in their generation go through because of the internet and um, so I, I strongly believe that um, in spite of the fact that there are many challenges mm -hmm. they are all on the foundation of the lack of direction okay. and purpose for the youth. Okay, what what would you say is contributing to this lack of mentorship, uh, lack of direction, non preparedness for the f for the future uh, in the youth, uh, yeah. which the Christian youth, you, I believe. Well, uh, let let's let's uh, let's generalize it now more because you know it's not only the Christian youth may have the uh, mm -hmm. the uh, peculiar problems, and okay. as you mentioned in, okay. in your intro, that because of their Christian beliefs and faith, mm -hmm. they may be able to come through in a way. But there are others who are, don't know Christ and have not experienced him. And therefore, in the face of the temptations that they have to deal with, all the challenges that confront them, mm -hmm. they may find other ulterior means yeah. that, or engage yeah. in social vices yeah. that will get them into a, a lot of trouble. So I'm, I'm looking at us helping them. Okay. Helping those ones who have not found Christ yet, but they and, and they're faced with all of these challenges and stuff like that. Listening to you now. Okay. Um, Reverend, I believe strongly that it's about time we as a church take our place. Okay. Um, because um, uh, Time Magazine, okay. in, on 6th December 1999, mm. um, spanned 2,000 years of leaders, and Jesus Christ still stood out as the greatest leader within two uh, I mean, millennia. millennia. So mm. I strongly believe that if we have the Christ vision, that he came here, to influence society and mm. he told the church to occupy till he comes. Mm -hmm. So I strongly believe that as a church, if we understand that um, it's true, we are here to prepare people to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. But then as pilgrims and strangers, we need to make impact before we depart. Mm. So I believe that if we take our place as the light of the world and as the salt of the earth, mm. we'll be able to help people who are not even Christians. There will be people who will look at the kind of life we are living, the kind of um, life God has given us per the Holy Spirit in us, per the vision and Christ himself reliving his life through us. We'll be able to influence these people and even draw them mm. to come and know Christ who is the ultimate life transformer. Okay. Yes, please. Okay, Mami, Mami Dokwa, you will have something to add on that. Yes, I mean, I pretty much have to agree with him and also say that definitely the church was supposed to be the solution to okay. all of these things. Um, initially, I was just thinking, like the Bible says, that the kingdoms of this world mm. will become the kingdoms of our Lord and His Christ. Mm. What are the kingdoms? Whether it's the economic system, the political system, mm. the church is supposed to be there. Mm. What is the church? It's not a building. It's the people. People, And true. our character. Mm -hmm. And the question is that we're supposed to be the ones solving problems okay. that the world cannot solve. Answering the question that the world cannot answer. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible was talking about how we are the light. Mm -hmm. The darkness cannot comprehend whenever light appears darkness has to disappear mm -hmm. so when we are being the light we okay. will see the change but i think because we are not living as the light okay. as the church that is why we're not seeing the change that mm -hmm. we want to see okay and i just want to just say quickly somebody's mentioned earlier about being able to share and be open yeah there's no transparency because we are uncomfortable with the truth because the truth is messy. Mm -hmm. Okay. The truth is that if you're young, you're going to have struggles. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the truth of the challenges of the youth yes. is messy. Very mm -hmm. messy. And and therefore you you reckon that they are not able to open up to an adult yes. who may be able to counsel them of or help course. them. Yes. And and therefore they they shield 
some of the things or even hide it yes. from their parents or from their pastors or yes. whoever may be able to help them. Yes. But but don't you think that that uh, uh, rather uh, uh, ex exposes them yes. to more danger? Okay, by sharing? B by not sharing. By not sharing. Oh, yes, yeah. of course, yes. And the thing is that we're supposed to create as an environment of trust. Okay. Even as parents, for mm. your kids to tell you things. Because mind you, you were also young ones. <laughs> you had hormones. Oh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everything that they went with is lying. Okay. Or, or, or looking for... Everybody has been through that phase before. Okay. The, look at the Bible says in Hebrews, we have a high priest. Okay. Yeah, I understand. He okay. said he feels everything you feel because there was nothing that... You know, the every temptation that we He was tempted in every way, every, but every way. We even say every, some way. Yeah. Every, every single thing that you ever face as a human being, mm. Christ experienced. Okay. Because because so that is why he came to cause of the element of compassion and yeah. empathy. Mm. But it's missing with the older people because now why are you not creating the space for them to be truthful with you? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I wish we had a parent here. <laughs> yes. I wish we had a parent here who probably may, may be able to speak for our parents. Because I know for many parents yes. who, uh, like you mentioned, some, some not many of them don't have any idea mm. what the children are dealing with. Mm. Probably those of them in, in secondary schools True. or in universities mm. and stuff that they're getting drawn into uh, alcoholism, occultism, yes. sexual immorality. And all. Right. I mean, despite the fact that they know yes. that when you get to that age, you will be tempted. Of However, but because they don't open up and most parents probably are looking forward to say, maybe have sit down with their daughters or sons to say, what is going on exactly. and the children will hide it or to say oh, everything yeah. is fine blah 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 even if they are flunking at the exams because of bad behavior and that kind of stuff yeah. but there could be yes. i'm not i'm not holding brief for any parents right. but there could be some parents or some oh. some sort of guardians yes. who are, are willing to sit down to talk to their children yes. if only they will be transparent mm. why do you think that you find it so difficult can, to I, open can up. I be transparent myself? Shoot, shoot. My beginning of transparency with my own mother started when she shared her own story. Okay, brilliant. So sometimes the parents want the child to tell them. But okay. they're afraid, they're wondering, would you understand? Yeah. So the moment where you share your story, mm -hmm. guess what? When I was young, mm -hmm. I remember how there was a boy I liked. And the mom, you know, like being real. Okay. The child, oh, <laughs> mommy went through that. <laughs> oh, let me also tell you. Okay. You see that element? Yeah. So yeah. just to be able to know that I think that you see, because you are the parent and you mm. want the child to tell you, mm -hmm. don't start by asking. Okay. You need to tell them stories. Even if you have to create something wow. for your child to be able to feel <laughs> safe. So feel safe that they can't actually talk tell to you or relate. They won't be judged. Okay. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I get it. It's a <laughs> solid, solid point. Solid yeah, point. Exactly. Solid point. So if they come, if, if, if the parent can come to the level of the child to say, listen, I've dealt with what you're dealing mm -hmm. with. So we can, mm -hmm. we can level and, and, and talk about it. Oh, so right. at least if there are ways I can help you, then I can help you, That's right. which which is brilliant, very yeah. brilliant point. But many parents are afraid mm -hmm. to even raise some of the subject matters mm -hmm. that uh, the youth are dealing with. Okay, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about uh, dealing with the issues of uh, sexual immorality and stuff like that. Yes. Uh, uh, and even to, to do an education, you know, mm -hmm. because sometimes you need to prepare. The dangers are there when the youth engage in sexual immorality uh, are countless yes. countless mm. and i don't know i mean i will ask you pastor ben okay. what what were some of the issues with that that you had to deal with in your working with the youth oh, i still deal with them even now okay you know um i mean it's so, some examples some examples some of cases that you've had to deal with with the youth especially with issues of uh, oh, sex well, and stuff okay we've mentioned a lot of them but to be honest with you, I keep learning from them. Okay. There are things they tell me. I'm like, what is that? Then they have to now tell me what actually <laughs> they, is. In. They describe and to you yes. any terminologies that you want to just share. Okay, I'm very. I I was very surprised the first time I knew what make out was. Oh. Was when I was counseling somebody, <laughs> you know, and this issue of um phone sex, internet sex, okay. um, sharing of pictures, yeah. and okay, all of that. Mm. I think. When you were talking, you said something I would like to touch briefly. Mm. When we are mentoring people, okay, and we don't expose our pain mm -hmm. and what we've been through, we we actually intimidate them okay. and raise them. Okay. So most people 
are following people who look so perfect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and their height seems so unattainable. Okay. When sometimes we the mentors ourselves, where we've been, <laughs> we've never been there. Okay. So um I I I okay, I'll give you a, a practical example. One day, um a guy called me and said a number of things to me and mm. how he wants to go and make peace with his parents. Mm. So when we sat down when we were talking, in fact his mom almost collapsed because she couldn't believe, believe that, the world. that this is where he's been. Mm -hmm. So I actually think that um, we should begin to talk about some things. Okay. For example, in our youth church, I preach on sexual immorality. Okay. I talk about some things and I get as practical as I can be. Okay. So that people can know that, oh, the heights they have attained, they didn't just come there. Mm -hmm. They have struggles as we have. Because okay. I think most parents even think that their children will judge them mm -hmm. okay. or will think that um, they will have the cost to even get west or okay. even mommy well, was well, there well, exactly uh -huh. i mean yeah, because it kind of said well you set the precedent so if i'm fooling around uh -huh. it's okay it's just a challenge uh -huh. of my my age yeah but when we expose them mm -hmm. to the dangers and even the examples of others mm -hmm. and maybe how they only came out by grace and by mercy mm -hmm. okay. it can really help us so mm -hmm. Um, it reminds me of something that happened in 2 Kings 20 verse 19. Mm -hmm. um, when Hezekiah had recovered and people from Babylon came to visit him. Mm -hmm. And the prophet came and told him that all his treasury will be taken away to Babylon. Mm -hmm. The Bible says Hezekiah was okay because it wasn't going to happen in, in his, his time. <laughs> you, and, and so I believe that um, I will plead with parents and I will plead with pastors and leaders of churches that mm. they won't be around forever yeah we are the ones going to take over and it seems the devil is really mentoring his people so well i mean they are they are so advanced in what they are doing because if you take a christian who's been through children's church teens church and is now in uni mm -hmm. and you look at somebody else who's also been through the world mm -hmm. the the level they are operating mm. and what we have can't match it's like we can't even we yeah, can't they've, even they've gone too far. Them. Yeah, they've gone too far. Mm. So I believe that we, if we can do something about children's church, if we can do something about youth church to equip them as an army being sent to the world, we will definitely be able to touch the world for the Lord. Okay. All right. So, hmm, interesting. Mm. Interesting. So w let's try and see if we can uh, uh, find out what would be the causes i mean we've been able to identify the areas of par mm. parental flaws especially mm. not being able to tr be transparent with the children therefore not helping them to come out and and, and share their challenges with them especially i mean the issues of sex is one thing mm. the other things of uh, occultism and being drawn into all manner of uh very deep mm. uh demonic activities that can hold their lives bound forever is also there he has his own danger exactly all, all kinds of things uh what is what is contributing to the failure on the part of parents or society or government or individuals themselves in helping the youth who are being confronted with these challenges mommy uh, i think i'll just say it also goes back to self-image okay. let's just go back to genesis okay so the bible talks about how they were naked and unashamed mm -hmm. the moment they disobeyed god they covered themselves so we've been going through an element of covering okay of covering up as a way to protect or deal with issues of sin or mm. weaknesses okay and so what happened even with our parents they have things that they are even battling with mm -hmm. that they can't even see now even before i came here, i was just thinking why you ask a good question like the older generation why are they not doing why because sometimes they don't even know themselves mm. okay because how do you give what you don't have true and a lot of people are growing up in families where maybe their father also grew up in a home where nobody spoke with him mm. how can mm. he give that to his child mm. you see and i just want to even touch on you mentioned this whole sexual immorality thing i want mm. to even say look at statistics show one out of every eight girls would have experienced sexual abuse in wow. their lifetime mm. one out of 20 boys and they are saying that 90 percent in the age when the age group let's say like from three to like 12 would have been by somebody a, a close family mm. member mm. Mm. Or someone they trusted okay so even the element of sexual immorality must not start from don't do mm -hmm. sometimes kids are even people are exposed to things early mm -hmm. that they can't understand mm. and they find themselves with desires they don't understand mm. and so no one is starting from there mm -hmm. what is happening what are you watching in the home so what are kids exposed to so even sometimes even the parents themselves are even watching the pornography <laughs> how can i tell my child not to watch mm -hmm. how can i you see in the church how many times are people preaching about masturbation mm -hmm. 
you know, about issues of, well, they'll talk about, oh, if you are gay, they're sin, whatever it is. But mm-hmm. there are people who are practicing sodomy, even in mm-hmm. marriage, in, same, in, in, a, in a heterosexual marriage. There are all kinds of strange things happening. Mm-hmm. But people don't talk about. <laughs> you see what I'm trying to say? Okay. And so it's like, um, with the older people, maybe it's because they themselves don't have the answer. They don't have the answers. They, they need help. They also need help. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Time coming close to 20 minutes before we wrap up. I mean, it is, feels like the hour is not enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can join the conversation. Maybe you have some questions. You have some comments. We're talking about uh, the, the Ghanaian Christian youth, or if you will, the Ghanaian youth and their challenges that uh, they're facing, the many struggles that they have uh, on, the, on the sexual front, with occultism, where peer pressure and all of its effect, negative effects on, on them. So if you have a question, maybe you have a, you have a comment. Probably, maybe also, you need help. You need some form of counseling uh, as a youth struggling with all of these things. You can join us on WhatsApp 244 340 Four three seven again zero two four four three four zero four three seven and then also on Facebook Facebook slash Joy Time and you can send it there right across. Okay, I have I think I have a few comments. Okay, let let's take a few questions and then I'll come to the to the comments that uh, appear on on WhatsApp now. Okay, so what are some of the practical ways that the church or society or if you will government can help deal with these challenges that the youth are confronted with all right um i believe that is because we left the jesus method okay of raising people which is discipleship okay um the jesus method you yes, say that is discipleship okay. you know hmm. um the great commission in matthew 28 18 to 20 okay goes beyond evangelism okay it's actually christ-like disciple making okay you know in in ezra um 3 verse 12 there was an interesting experience. Bible says when they came back from captivity mm-hmm. and the, the foundation of the temple was laid. Bible says the old men were crying, mm. but the young men were rejoicing. Mm. Why? Because, you see, the young men never saw Solomon's temple and the glory of Solomon's temple. Mm-hmm. But the old men, they were young people being carried into captivity when the temple was being destroyed. Okay. So they realized that the temple which was about to be raised, the foundation couldn't be compared to Solomon's temple. Okay. Therefore, we are youth, we are full of energy, mm-hmm. but we lack experience. Okay. Without connecting with folks who have gone ahead who have experience, who have pain, who see further than we've seen, Mm -hmm. we can never really um, influence society for the Lord. So I really believe that where we have failed Mm -hmm. is that we have raised new converts at the expense of Christ-like disciples. Mm -hmm. Today, our discipleship methods is to make people more grounded in our church, in our denomination, than becoming like Jesus Christ. Mm. So if there's a system where... Every one of us understand that we have been discipled to disciple others. That our discipleship is never complete, so we are also able to raise disciples. Mm. This thing is going to continue forever because discipleship is not an introduction to the Christian life mm. because the Christian himself has been called to be a disciple. Okay. But these are many people we've come to church, people have evangelized to us, okay. and nobody ever guided us through. So, mm. obviously, I'll be in church, and if I came with masturbation, how will masturbation ever go? Okay. Because without accountability, masturbation may never go. Okay. I'm, maybe I was into drugs, and I came to church. Mm-hmm. You follow up on me to come to church, but mm. there's no personal follow-up. Am I doing quiet time? Okay. Am I learning how to pray? Mm-hmm. Am I overcoming as a Christian? Okay. I believe that the lack of discipleship, this has been the power drop okay. in society, in government, and everywhere. Okay. Because if we're raising Christ-like disciples, I believe that we'll have people in authority who are Christ-like disciples, so the values and the the, the culture of Christ will be seen there. Mm-hmm. But however, today everybody says he's a Christian, but no one has ever been, most people, I beg your pardon, mm-hmm. have never been raised to live the Christ-like life okay. everywhere we find ourselves. Okay. It, it, it was a bit narrowed on t- onto the church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, we're, we're looking at what's the role of society there. I mean, the church, by all means, should mm. em- employ the Jesus example, which is mm. discipleship, uh, following them up, finding out how they are faring as, as they begin the walk with the Lord and stuff mm. like that. Being able to intimate with them mm. to, so that they can share their pain or their struggles mm. and then the, you can give them guidance or counsel, yeah. Yeah. as it were. What can, this, what can the general society also do 
-hmm. Okay, what can government do? Okay. Okay. Let's look at th those areas as well. Mm -hmm. Mami, would you like to respond? Yeah, so in the case of government, we are not dealing with just Christians. So okay. it's, it's, uh, it goes across yeah. board. Across board yeah. I would say that the education system is very important. Okay. So basically, what can you bring into the curriculum mm -hmm. that helps to even deal with the element of patriotism? Okay. Um, um, identity, love for self. Okay. So what will happen is that if the government could step in and say, well, maybe in every, we we'll create a curriculum mm -hmm. that teaches about values. We used to have that in the oh, past. Really? Yes, Ghana used to have that. Well, it's, well you it's see, it's <laughs> Ghana used to oh, that. If you, yes, yes, in the in the in the sixties uh, during, during Kwame Nkrumah's era wow. and beyond. Yes, exactly. there were very very profound things that teaches on patriotism. I mean, that was the what, what gave birth to the national anthem and the pledge and wow. stuff. All of those things were meant to kind of conscientize us to be uh, patriotic citizens and therefore yes. But uh, it, 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 we're kind of I don't know. We were kind of away from that, right? <laughs> So if there's a way, because think about it, you're talking about you can't blame the youth mm -hmm. for wanting mm -hmm. the quick money or to have a quick life. The, the technology makes everything quick. Okay. And we are looking at what's happening in the developed world. Things mm -hmm. are going fast. Yeah. Not knowing that it's um it's different in our situation where our, we are peculiar considering okay. our history. Mm -hmm. So what can you do in the curriculum to teach what it means to be Ghanaian? Okay. Look at our history. China has come a long way. True, true. And it's taking a lot of sacrifice. Mm. True. It's taking a lot of pain. So what would, for, to have this long-term gain, so mm. how do you teach, incorporate that into an educational system okay. to ensure you're raising a new generation okay. of leaders mm -hmm. who understand long-term gains? Long-term gains. You see what I mean? Well, and then well, with, if, yeah, with society, I think mm. um, what's happening a lot, even in the American, African-American society, mm -hmm. knowing what they've been through in their history, they have a lot of mentorship programs, like what you were saying. Mm -hmm. Um um, how would you say mentors or yeah. even young other young people mm -hmm. who are doing well mm -hmm. can find a way to start a program how do you go back mm -hmm. mentor the other young people mm -hmm. with the skills you've learned okay. in marketing in different skills okay so I think mentorship programs mm -hmm. on the society level okay would be awesome would be awesome yes okay um, so all right but I came from the church point of view because mm -hmm. um, when you take our society which is ever evolving mm -hmm. you may not have the values that actually transform society mm. you know when you take certain paths okay let's take maybe nevada california mm. or las vegas mm. the society cannot really have any positive impact on anybody mm. but you see when you go to a place like germany it's because christianity dominated in germany you see it's very difficult to for people to even come to church because mm -hmm. what you preach in church is how the people live. Mm -hmm. They are honest. Mm -hmm. They are loyal. Mm -hmm. You know, a German will hardly tell you you are my friend. Mm -hmm. But when he sees it, he means it. Mm -hmm. But we live in a very diverse society mm -hmm. where I think that until the church takes our place mm. to raise people to enter government who can make these decisions to raise people to enter various areas in society to influence it mm. i think it's very difficult to demand from society what they don't have what they don't it's have. very difficult to demand from the government what the government doesn't have okay because i believe that if the government had a solution we wouldn't even need to have the discussion. Mm. So I believe that we must broaden our scope to realize that Jesus has called us to all spheres of life. Okay. Government, education, law, mm -hmm. so that everywhere we find ourselves, mm. we can then influence the society for the Lord. Okay. All right. Let's go to some comments on, on WhatsApp. One uh, from Kwesi Bello who says, Bless you, man of God. You're doing a great job. Well, we thank God. He said, Okay, you're sending... Uh, mm -hmm. birthday wishes to Mr. Ebo Kwansa in Indira Akute uh, happy birthday and long life prosperity okay well uh, it, you shot it one there okay. mm -hmm. uh, let's see wow okay um, okay uh, one from Patrick who says today Reverend Abose is contributing than just asking questions, <laughs> especially <laughs> with the lady. Well, I'm passionate about the youth. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I, and I work with a lot of youth as well. Okay. My, my passion is to see them grow up to become responsible uh, adults in society. So, wow. uh, all right. So, I think on, on Facebook, Kabna uh, Kobi uh, Fari says, if the church would not involve the youth in their planning activities and let the youth feel value, uh, this will help and go a long way to help. Uh, Mami, spot on with your submission. Watching live from Handover in the UK, uh, Kobna Sechijan. Mm -hmm. You know Kobna. 
maybe uh, mm -hmm. alberta ado Annum says thanks for educating us wow and then richie Lai says churches today are for their personal gains but not for the followers mm -hmm. interesting comments okay now on the sprinters row says so how do you draw the balance between sharing your youthful experience as a parent and keeping a respectful relationship between you and your child wow. hmm very interesting uh, and then example a mom may have been quite promiscuous in her youth but doesn't want her daughter following her example okay if she shares her experience the daughter may even find it intriguing and encouraging and feel like my mom did it then but it's fine now so me too i can do some <laughs> if she doesn't that she doesn't share the daughter may feel like uh, the mom can't relate with her struggles mm -hmm. I mean, and this leaves most parents in a dilemma, mm. okay, because they probably see, they see the temptation and the danger of where their daughters are going because they've been there. They want them to avoid it. Yeah. Sharing the experience might help, but it also can compromise the mother-daughter relationship and probably maybe even encourage the, the daughter to keep on going in that way. Uh, so how, how does a parent handle that one? I'll come to you on that. Yeah. But meantime, the phone lines are open. You can join us. Mm. Uh, 03022. Two one six five eight one again zero two zero zero three zero two two one six five eight one okay uh so okay let's say uh one says okay let me see this uh great show keep it up and you read and you quote titus 2 verse 7 and you sh you yourself must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teaching then he you added one factor leading to today's youth losing focus is inadequate modeling mm. from parents and guardians and i believe we mentioned that uh the youth wants to see you do it and not hear you say it yeah. <laughs> they want to see the light in you and not hear that there is a light and that's kwami in tony uh, from things allowed <laughs> solid point there solid solid kwami god bless you uh for sharing that and then uh one okay one says reverend uh okay what you mean uh runs for abose you were born runs for abose please don't introduce yourself by name okay lord help me <laughs> michael from nungwa no worries <laughs> some people are very interesting okay on facebook abakukwa amwa uh god bless you uh pastor benjamin amwa and then uh that's okay wife. that's your wife okay <laughs> hello wife how are you doing god bless you and then this one is it esinam or bless blessed dawn mm -hmm. god bless you pastor ben abakukwa okay your wife is uh doing your big time fan support <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay phone lines are open you can join us we have steven from mankasim hello steven how are you hello steven yes good evening good evening to you too thank you for joining us yes um about patriotism and values okay you cannot have anything better than leaders role in that okay the, the current crop of leaders we elect and their pension for v8 and luxurious life <laughs> cannot <laughs> be the ones to tell the youth to be patriotic okay patriotism died in ghana when those in government started stealing from the state oh, and that has not ended and that's what we are continuing up to today mm. so don't be deceived to say you should go and put it in the curriculum and go and teach who. <laughs> when they grow up, they see. Okay. Bad leaders with bad examples who call themselves Christians and Muslims. They are the reason why we are here. Mm. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stephen had some very interesting mm -hmm. hot, uh, uh, mm -hmm. comments there. But but he has a point. I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, we'll find your take on that. He, you, he says, can government or leadership teach the current generation integrity and patriotism when all their focus is p their personal gain you know stealing from the state coffers and uh, doing all this kind of nepotism and well mm -hmm. they can't teach any younger person uh, uh, if you will those values mm -hmm. ajiman joseph in tema hello how are you uh, good evening Reverend. thank you thank you for joining uh, us on um, a walk with jesus i i i i've lost some minutes of your program so uh, <laughs> forgive me if i'm going off a bit no no challenge go ahead please yeah my few suggestions i want to give is that i think the youth who are going astray nowadays are 
looking for job and money. That's why sometimes they get themselves involved in some certain activities that is not allowed as a Christian. Okay. So I think if the government is not doing that much, I think the church authorities should also do something to help the youth mm -hmm. to get themselves gainfully employed or to get themselves doing something. Okay. Because the other hand finds himself doing something nasty. Okay. Mm -hmm. There was a time a friend of mine was saying that he, that he won't go to the church again because the pastors are in big, big vehicles <laughs> and their children are being flown to Europe and other places and they are suffering. Mm. So I think something must be done for their youth to be getting something doing it. Okay. Okay. All right, Ajima. I, I thank you. <laughs> Sylvia Osei uh, uh, says, as a country, we must be interested in family life, which starts with healthy marriage mm -hmm. and parenting skills, which can rewrite the dysfunctional duplication mm -hmm. to give hope to the young people. Mm -hmm. Too much toxic homes in our mm -hmm. day. The church must be real to meet the expectations of the current generation. Thanks. And that's from Sylvia Osei. Sylvia, mm -hmm. that's very deep. Yeah. Very deep and very solid point. Okay, that uh, a quick one. But before then, uh, one says hi. Uh, uh, to the youth sometimes get intimidated to share a challenge with their mentors because he or she doesn't make it known that they have been there before. And that's from Edmund. He, you say also regards to mommy. Okay, all right. Um, okay, your your final submission and then. Uh, it will be will be wrapping up in okay. a minute. Mm. Um, ever since I started talking, I've been talking about this Christ-like disciple making, Christ-like disciple making. Okay. In Matthew twenty-eight, mm. verse eighteen to twenty, mm. when Jesus asked us to go into the world to make disciples, the original world there didn't necessarily mean the whole world, but people groups. Okay. So, um, because people groups make up the world. Okay. So he's intending that we have doctors who have been discipled. Mm. Because I believe we are coming from the Christian um, youth point of view. Lawyers who have been discipled. Okay. Um, educationists who have been um, discipled. Okay. So that these people will be like mercenaries for the church. Okay. The missionary is not one just traveling to some hinterland, mm -hmm. but we can also have urban missionaries in media in every form uh, of of life who are there mm -hmm. to impart and to change society. Okay. I so I my final submission is that you don't need to be a pastor to disciple somebody. Mm -hmm. Every Christian, you need to understand that this is our mission. Okay. Because other people in their own way are also discipling people to to fulfill their agenda okay so i just want to encourage every listener mm. the leadership starts with you okay you don't need to be in politics to be a leader mm -hmm. but start leading your home start leading your friends start mm. leading wherever you are because mm. the next generation is so dependent on you on 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 you okay so that's my final point okay thank mm. you pastor ben mommy yeah so um just two things just to also answer what the the question the lady asked yeah. mm. i would say go back to the verse where it says perfect Perfect love cast out fear. Fear. <laughs> if you are a parent and you are afraid of how your child will see you, mm. God doesn't operate mm. from a place of fear or place from a place of love. Okay. The thing is that obviously you won't go and tell your twelve year old child okay. that I was so promiscuous. Yeah. There are some things they can't handle. Okay. God doesn't give you everything at a go. You take your time. Okay. So my first crush in primary school, my mom told me, Oh, I've had this before. I thought I was going crazy. I was having <laughs> butterflies. I was confused. She said, oh, I've been there. Mm. Gradually. So you release the information on this based on the level the child is at to maintain oh. the balance okay and for me my last message would be to all the Ghanaian youth to know that the struggle that you're going through is not peculiar okay everything that you are facing is real we are facing true challenges i want us to all come together and support each other okay even if we don't have anyone to look up to i know that there are people in the society mm. who are trying to do it right okay and even if we can't find mm. thank god for jesus amen who said uh, he's the highest standard amen. and he um has given us a template to live by yeah. don't every every emotion you feel of fear of of Thing of uh, the unemployment, the last word thoughts you have, it's not strange. You're mm -hmm. human. Okay. But these are not supposed to control you. So at the end of the day, I'll just end with Philippians 2.13 that talks about it is God who works in us to will 
and to do. So even if you don't have the strength to make the right choice, it is God who will help you. Okay. And even to follow that right choice, it is God. So mm. just live by that and you always have strength. God okay. bless you. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I'll read this last message. It says, I, for the sake of my message, I want to mention, I won't want to mention my name. And he says, uh, okay, I must say I'm touched by this discussion this evening. I grew up without a mother or father to the stage of the university. I think I have seen a mother figure in the mom in your studios wow rev there's something eating me up that i would want to pour out to someone and and, and heal myself i'll be grateful if you can get me on, in touch with her to speak with her and please that will be if she's really a picture of how she's speaking to our hearts this evening we will be willing to listen to me uh mommy is talking about you it says god bless you rev and keep up keep the good work going as you change many lives